Hi everyone, Jasmine here. Sorry I am late. I'm dealing with a sick baby, so sorry about that, you guys. But I'm happy to be here, excited to talk with you guys again another month, just going over blogging tips and um, sharing some of my blogging knowledge as well. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Jasmine. I have been blogging for 11 years. I have a blog called Miss Villainia Magazine. That was my first blog that I got started. And then I have a second blog with my husband, Chris, called Blogging Money Life, where we talk about blogging tips as well as um, a little bit of our life as well. So what I usually do on these monthly calls is I answer any blogging questions that you may have. So you can ask those questions in the chat here and I'll get an answer to you. What I like to do to start is just to um, introduce myself, like I just did, <laughs> and then I want to know who all is here. So as you come in, go ahead and post a comment letting me know where you are in the world and what you are interested in learning about today. Um, so go ahead and do that. One thing that I always love to do for each of these sessions is just tell a story because um, honestly, I just love talking about blogging. Even if I don't have any blogging questions, I feel like there's still so much to discuss, right? So today, something that I wanted to talk about was getting ahead with your blogging. So one thing that I hear from people a lot is once you start your blog and you're writing content, you kind of feel like you're on a tread treadmill a little bit, like you're just getting content ready in time for that timeline you set for yourself to publish a new blog post, right? The same thing if you're like making videos or scheduling things on social media, it's hard to get ahead. So I wanted to talk about my strategy in detail, what I do to get ahead when it comes to um, blogging content. And what's nice about getting ahead is it frees up space in your mind so you can actually think more strategically about your blog in general and come up with some good ideas on ways that you can um, make great content, grow your brand, grow your blog. And um, yeah, just give yourself some space to think. It's, it's pretty much what getting ahead does for you. And also, it's nice to get ahead because if something happens in life where you need to not write a blog post this week because something came up, it's nice because you're a month ahead or a week ahead or whatever it takes. So I'm going to talk to you about what my strategy has been to get a month ahead with blogging and um, see if you guys are interested. So um, I want to start by saying that you should have a consistent schedule when it comes to writing content. I, I think a standard schedule for blogging is writing one blog post a week, right? So for many of you, that means you're writing something new once a week on whatever day of the week is um, ideal for you, right? So writing one blog post a week. Now, the first thing you need to do is figure out what is the easiest week for you to get ahead. And what I like to call this week is easy content week. <laughs> um, for, we have this for our YouTube channel once a month. It's when I usually do my Q&A video like this. This is an easy video for us consider, compared to our other videos that we do because it doesn't require me to edit. Um, I do a little research before I jump into this call, but it doesn't require me to write a script. So there's a lot less work that goes into this video. So if I'm going to create content to get ahead, this is the week to do it because I don't have as much work to do for this particular video. Now, when it comes to a blog, you want to have an easy um, blog post week. And what that usually looks like is instead of writing an article from scratch, maybe it's you going back through some of your older content and updating an old article as opposed to writing a new one. Or it could be writing a more simplistic article compared to the content you usually write. So for example, if your content that you typically write is around 2,000 words, this will be writing a 600 word article or 800 words or whatever, something that's shorter or doesn't take as much time um, for you to write. So you need to have at least one week of the month where it's a little bit of a lighter load for you just so you have that time to get ahead for the month, um, the month coming up. So what do you do during this week? Now, something you wanna make sure you have one day, just take some time out to sit and brainstorm, right? Brainstorm until you cannot brainstorm anymore. Come up with a ton of blog topics. Come up with a ton of um, video ideas. Write them all down. 
And then once you get out every single idea that you can possibly think of, you want to spend some time categorizing those ideas, right? So you want to categorize them into three different categories. That is easy, medium, and hard. Now, easy is something that won't take you that long to create. It's a topic that you know well. Um, you don't need to do a whole lot of research for it. It's something you can knock out in an hour or two. That's easy, right? Medium is something that um, takes a little bit more effort. Maybe you do have to do some research, but it's still a topic that you're very comfortable with. So you don't have to worry about um, a whole lot of information going into this. Hard is something that it takes a ton of research from you, or it's a really long article, or you have to take a bunch of pictures for it, something, something that takes longer than normal um, for an article for you to write. That goes into the hard category. So what you want to do is go through that long list you just created of brainstorming ideas and categorize them on easy, medium, and hard. Now, why do you do this? I'll tell you why. Because um, you're going to have some weeks where it is so, you have all the time in the world and you want to knock out as much content as you possibly can. So um, maybe this is that time where you can work on your hard content, right? And then you're going to have some days where um, it's your normal amount of time that you have to write an article and that may be a time for medium. And then you have times like this week where you're trying to get ahead as much as possible. You want to knock out as much easy content <laughs> as you possibly can, right? It's nice to have um, a, a nice stack of content ready to go. And um, if you're doing this for the first time, as far as like getting a week where you're writing a bunch of content to get ahead, I highly recommend focusing on the easy content first, okay? So um, pull some things from your easy list, right? And say, okay, these are my easy articles I can write. How many can I get done in a day? And then start planning out your week with that, that easy content. So you have your week where you have that one blog post, right? Let's knock that out on Monday. So that blog post can go out on Wednesday. All right, perfect. So then Tuesday, I'm going to work on my, um, so I'm basing this off of if you're doing one article a week, right? And you have five days or seven days in the week, whatever days that you typically use, you want to assign a piece of content to each day of the week for that particular week, right? So you already have your article for that week that has to go out. So that's, you know, done. You have to get that done. If you're doing an article a week, that means you have to get four articles for the next month completed this week, right? Monday's already out because you had to write your article for this week, right? So now we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So now you have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to write one blog post each day so you can get ahead for the month ahead, right? So scheduling one blog post per day. Now, I know that seems like a lot. Um, for a lot of people, you may have some dedicated time for your blog, whether that be in the morning or in the evening. But um, just having in your mind, like, I'm going to write at least one piece of content every day. And this is great because you only have to do it for a week. After you get this done, you're, you're back to your normal schedule as far as like being able to write, you know, leisurely, if you like. <laughs> but um, yeah, just get it done. Put it one day a week on, into that schedule. The next thing you want to do is figure out if there's, um, well, for that week, you wrote your pieces of content. What other things do you want to do? Do you want to promote some type of affiliate uh, thing that's coming out next month? Do you want to write a sponsored post for next month? Uh, do you have videos that you want to come up with for next month? Uh, go through what those things look like as well and see if you can fit that into your schedule as far as writing or recording or um, uh, doing some type of affiliate campaign and put that on a calendar for yourself. Um, I have something that I do every month where I am putting together a list of different articles for the month. And it's just an Excel document that we use where we have the blog title and what day is going to be published. So as we're creating that content, we're also going through and making sure that we're highlighting it to show what's done and what isn't. Um, so you want to make sure you have something that you're keeping track of all the content that's being created and what day is plan you plan on publishing that content for the next month, right? So... That's something to be mindful of as well. Now that you have your content for the next month, what do you do for the rest of that time? <laughs> um, there's a lot that goes into 
a blog post, right? It's not just writing the article. You have to edit it. You have to add images to that article. You have to proofread it. You need to add affiliate links to it. Um, so if you're writing that content, make sure that you're spending some time um, each day getting that article all the way ready. Or after you write all your content, you can say, okay, this weekend, I'm going to work on getting all the extra stuff done, editing it, adding pictures, getting it formatted for WordPress, whatever, um, or all the bells and whistles you need to do for your content. The other thing that you need to do is create social media images for it. So you want to create your social media images and get those scheduled on whatever social media scheduling tool that you use. So once you get that article ready, you can schedule it to be published in WordPress on the days it's supposed to be published um, the, month, the month after or the next month. And then you want to schedule your social media. So when that article gets published on that day, your social media is also being published uh, around that same time. So that's the other thing that you want to do. Get your social media scheduled and ready to go. Um, so now that you have your content ready for next month, you have it all scheduled out and you are officially one month ahead. What do you do for the month <laughs> since you don't have any content to create? I'll tell you some ideas of some excellent things that you can do when it comes to creating content uh, or not creating content, just managing your blog while your content is going up. The first thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is paying attention to stats, right? You know this article is being published on Wednesday, right? So you saw the article go up. You saw your social media go up because it's already scheduled. How's it doing? Is it performing like you expected it to? Is it doing less than that? If it's doing less, now it's time for you to start pulling some of those levers. Maybe you need to share it in some Facebook share groups so that people can see more of your content. Maybe you need to share it on your personal account, um, your personal social media accounts so people can see the content that you publish and they can go and check it out. Maybe it means you send out an email to your email list and let them know that you publish a new article um, that needs some traction as well. So there's some levers that you can pull. It's just a matter of paying attention to it and seeing uh, what you can do to make sure that it has legs and that your article continues to get traction. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to your stats and then find ways to optimize your content if you feel like it's not performing, right? So that's one thing that you can do since your content is already being scheduled out. Another thing that you can focus on is think about some bigger strategies to grow your blog. So when you're off of that treadmill of creating content every single week, you don't have to think about, oh, what article am I going to publish this week? Because you already have a schedule a month ahead of time. Now you can think about how do I grow my blog? Look at your data from the month before and for several months before. What has worked? What hasn't? Has anything declined? You notice that there's a certain social media platform that isn't really doing anything for you. Maybe you shouldn't post on it anymore. Um, or maybe you can think about maybe it's time for me to think about creating a product or look into some other affiliate campaigns that I can I can do. Uh, so these are all things you can think about now that your brain is freed um, from creating content every single week. Right. So I talked about um, reviewing your stats and seeing how you can optimize your content that's being published because it's already scheduled. I talked about thinking about your longer term strategy for your blog. So thinking about how to grow it, um, as well as other things that you can do um, for monetization for your blog. Another thing you can do is try to get ahead again. <laughs> you already created all your content for this month, right? No one says that you have to wait until that easy week to try to get ahead with more content. For some people, you may want to spend a couple of weeks out of that month um, getting ahead on content. So you can be two months ahead as opposed to just one month. So that's something else that you can do as well. Another thing you can do is look at trending topics. So trending topics are things that are happening in the news right now. And you're like, wow, this would be a great topic for me to talk about on my blog. Let me hurry up and write an article really quick and get it published so that I can get on this trend bandwagon and get some of that traffic since people are searching for this particular topic. So that's something else that you can do since you're not on the, um, the track of continuing to having to write content over and over again. Um, what else do I do? <clears throat> so for those of you who have just joined us, I'm talking about getting ahead with your blogging um, schedule. We already talked about my strategy for writing more content um, over the course of a week for the next month so that all of your content for the month for the next month is already published. It's not published. It's already written and scheduled to be published. So you don't have to worry about every week, what am I going to write about? I need to write this article so it can get done and 
all of those things. You can think about other things in your blogging business. And some things that I talked about that you can do when you have more room <laughs> to think is um, growing your overall blog with monetization strategies. Um, I talked about optimizing your content as being scheduled since you don't have to worry about writing it. All you can focus on now is just how is it doing? Is it performing the way I expected it to perform? And if not, what are some things that I can do to make sure that it's getting more traction? Because now you can pay attention to that <laughs> instead of just working on getting the, the content published. So that's something else that you can work on doing. Um, another thing that you can focus on when it comes to your blog, I talked about is trending topics. So there's something trending in the news. You can come up with some content right then and there to write so that you can get on the bandwagon of trending content. I also talked about getting more ahead. You can get more than one month ahead. You can get two months ahead. Or you can change your strategy altogether to publish more than you currently do. Instead of publishing one article a week, maybe you can do two a week. So that's completely up to you. You're freed up more to be able to focus on growing your, your blog in, in various ways. Another thing I like to do when I have more time is uh, reach out to other bloggers. So I like to think about collaborations that you can do with other bloggers, seeing if you want to interview somebody, maybe on your blog or in a video, or you can work with someone to do some type of affiliate partnership campaign um, that's a especially for you, or you can spend that time applying for more sponsored post opportunities so that you can get paid um, more often with your blog. But the key is you have to be consistent, right? So getting ahead with your blog is probably one of the most important things that you can do because it frees you up to grow your blog even more. Um, I'm going to take a moment there just to field any questions. So I'm talking a lot here about getting ahead with your blog content, how I do it, and what that frees you up to do once you do get ahead with your blogging content. But what I wanted to do is see if anyone has any questions. And it doesn't have to be related to what I'm talking about today. If you have any questions in general when it comes to blogging, feel free to post them in the comments here, and I'd be happy to get an answer back to you. Now, you can ask, ask any questions about blogging throughout this whole session. I'm going to keep yapping because <laughs> I can talk about blogging all day. Um, so yeah, go ahead and post whatever questions you may have for me in the comments below. Okay. So all that to say, um, I think getting ahead is a good idea when it comes to your blog in general. And um, it frees you up to do other things on your blog when you do get ahead. Now, if you are having trouble with writing content um, that often, I would recommend looking at when you're actually writing content, right? So this took a long time for me to realize that there's a time in the day where I am the best when it comes to writing content. If I write a blog post in the morning, it takes me a couple of hours. If I try to write a blog post in the evening, that can easily turn into four or five hours of me writing because I'm tired. My brain is not working as good as it would if I woke up in the morning and wrote a piece of content. So understand what time works best for you when it comes to creating content. And that's the time that you want to focus on during your light week for writing um, content to get ahead. Make sure that you're writing at the same time and write until you run out of steam, honestly. So uh, make sure you're keeping that in mind. And that way you're way more efficient with getting more content done that week. And remember, it's only for that week and then you're going to be a month ahead. So it may feel like hell <laughs> a little bit to start, but it's one thing that you should just anticipate it. You know, there's one week of the, of the month where you are focusing on getting ahead with your content. And as you get, ooh, excuse me, as you get used to that um, cadence, of creating content, it does get a lot easier the next time you do it. Just look, you know, you may dread that week, like, oh, this is my week where I'm writing a ton of content again. But, <laughs> but what I will say is that gets easier. That whole feeling of it, the feeling like, you know, this is so much work, it's hard. It gets a lot easier because you get used to that cadence of doing it. But you have to do it consistently enough in order for it to get easier for you. So that's it. Those are my tips uh, when it comes to getting ahead with your content. Uh, I hope it was helpful <laughs> for you guys in regard to uh, getting ahead with your content and being able to uh, put your mind towards other things in your blogging business. 
Um, I want to list off a few more things that I think are important. Uh, the things that you can do in your blogging business when you have more space to think about your business outside of creating content, right? Um, you can look into different strategies as far as things that you may want to get into. I know a lot of bloggers who are successful who dabble in YouTube or having a podcast, and there are some of them that do all three. They have a blog, a podcast, and a YouTube channel. So when you have more room, when you're ahead with your content, you have more room to do other things, right? So that may be something to get into. One thing I have learned since starting a YouTube channel, I have some blog posts, right, that I'll publish and they don't do that well, right, compared to some other blog posts on my site. But when I do a video on it, some of those same articles that didn't do anything on YouTube um, or that didn't do anything on my blog take off on YouTube. And vice versa. We've done some videos that don't do all that well on YouTube, but then I publish an article about it and it just goes bonkers. And the other thing too, that you should know when it comes to creating content, writing blog posts, if you have a YouTube video in your blog post, whether you created the video or not, you are boosting, giving your blog post a super boost in regard to becoming more searchable on Google. So that's something else to be mindful of. Um, even if you're not creating a YouTube channel, um, if you want to use a video from someone else embed into an article that you're writing that's relevant to the topic, um, it can work wonders for your overall um, blog in as far as getting more traffic to it. To it. Um, so yeah, that's something else that you can do. See about dabbling into other uh, forms of media. Something else that I like to do, I mentioned pitching brands um, is an opportunity to make some money. Um, and it, it does take quite a bit of time. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I have a product called Blogging Money Update where I send out three emails a week that has 10 different sponsor opportunities in each email. So you can read through, we tell you how much it is, what type of bloggers are looking for, what the topic is, what the brand is. And you can apply um, through that email. It just takes you straight to the opportunity opportunity um, on that platform. So um, if you are applying for different sponsor post opportunities via influencer networks or pitching brands, that's something you can dedicate more time to when you're not focused on um, writing content all the time. So I think that's a great opportunity as well. Um, this would be a time I mentioned to create a product as well. So um, I have another product called Blogging Money Formula where I teach bloggers how to make money with um, sponsored posts and also just getting their blog ready to be monetized in general. And that took me like three months um, to, to create. And that was me like dedicating several hours every single day um, to it to create that. So if you get three months ahead of your blog content, then that just frees you up so you can work on bigger projects like that. Uh, so... I, I guess the best way to put this is the sky's the limit. Uh, obviously, if you are running a blogging business, it's important to make sure that you're publishing content consistently, right? But if you can get ahead on your blog content, it just opens so many doors for you to be able to think about your business strategically so that you can do other things in your business outside of just being on a treadmill of creating content, which is where I feel like a lot of bloggers fall off. They get on this treadmill of creating content and they're like, oh, it's just so much work. I am tired of thinking every week about what am I going to write about? Then I write it, then I have to edit it, then I got to get the images, get it on social media. And it's just so much work. When the reality is if you get ahead on your blog content, there are so many tools out there that does a lot of that stuff for you automatically. Like I use Grammarly as a tool um, to edit my blogs, <laughs> to edit my blog content so you don't have to worry about um going one hiring someone to review your article which is something that i know i was doing for a long time um to make sure i had a second pair of eyes on my content and that's what a lot of people do right because you don't no one want to have crappy content out there so i'll give you guys my affiliate link here in the comments for grammarly um i'm making sure that the link works there it goes it does all right i'm giving you my affiliate link for grammarly if you want to check that out like I said, you have someone that's proofreading your article as you're writing it. So that's awesome. Um, when I talked about the overall, the tool that allows you to um, schedule your social media out, that's the tool I use is called Social Bee. And I'll give you my affiliate link for that as well. 
make sure I have it. There you go. So yeah, I'll give you the affiliate link for that. And what Social Bee does is once you create your social media posts, meaning you create an images, an image for it, and you create it a um, a uh, comment for that post, it keeps it for you, and you can put them in categories. So I have it set up by like seasons. I have them set up set up by different types of content. So let's say, for example, when December rolls around and I have a ton of content that's about um, Christmas and gift guides, I just turn it on on Social Bee and it automatically start sharing my content, my older content that's related to that season. So that's another tool that you can use that is automatic and you don't have to worry about um, sharing your social media in real time because this tool is sharing it for you in real time uh, once that article gets published. So like I said, there's some tools out there that does a lot of these things for you automatically and saves you time so that you can focus on the bigger things like growing your blog and making sure that it's doing that is doing great. Now, if anyone has any more any questions for me, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll make sure to get an answer to you. Um, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to be able to do that so that you um, get answers to your questions. But um, overall, I think that's it. Like getting ahead on your content is amazing. It is so much better than the just in time method. And you'll see once you get one month ahead, even getting a couple of weeks ahead, I keep talking about one month, like even getting a couple of weeks ahead on your content, it just frees you up so much to be able to do more. And it also frees you up so you can take a break. I've seen some bloggers who have been doing this for years and like they literally never take vacation. They don't get a chance to take a break from their blog. And it's because they don't have anything set up for themselves to get ahead. So getting ahead is the way of the future, man. It's some work to start with as far as like having to write content, like in bulk, bulk creating content which can be, you know, a bummer. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's so nice when you do get ahead because then you have the opportunity to do other things with blogging. And there's so much to do when it comes to blogging. Like I mentioned, you can do like ads, you can create products, you can um, talk about your monetization strategy, pitch brands, apply for different sponsored post opportunities on influencer networks. You can come up with some affiliate strategies. You can partner with other bloggers. You can do some guest blogging on other places to get your blog traffic up. You can redesign your website because you feel like it needs to be refreshed. That's other notes that you can do. What else do I do with my blog? Um, it takes time. Oh, you can dabble into another media like YouTube or doing a podcast on top of doing your blog. So you can cross all that traffic with one another and make sure that you're getting as much traffic as you possibly can. Um, so that's something else that you can do. Um, I don't know. There's just so many ways. I've seen so many creative ways that people have taken their blogging business and made it a success. I mentioned some of those things, but I've even seen some people like take their blog posts that they've written and turn it into a book. So I think that's freaking cool um, as well, especially if you have a more personal blog where you're talking about like, this is what I did today. Here's a lesson that I learned, blah, blah, blah. Like those are some things that you can do. Um, yeah, but it all starts with getting ahead, y'all, because the, one of the most important things when it comes to blogging is being consistent. And one of the easiest ways to be consistent is to get ahead with your content um, and give yourself a little wiggle room to take a break if you need to or to just focus on some other things. But if you can dedicate one week a month to just creating content and getting ahead for a month, you're solid. You're solid and you can do it. So I don't see any questions in the chat here, but I do want to show the couple of tools that I mentioned. Grammarly, it checks your work for you, so you don't have to have someone proofread your article. It's going over the grammar, it's going over spelling, and it even rewords some of the things if you have content that's too wordy. Um, so it's really cool tool. I use it. My whole team uses Grammarly. I highly recommend it. That's my affiliate link there if you want to check it out. And then another tool that I use that I love is Social Bee. This is my affiliate link as well. Uh, what Social Bee does is it's a social media sharing tool, but it allow, it saves your posts that you do um, for your different articles. So you don't have to worry about creating a Facebook post every month for the same article because it's going to um, just keep 
a rotation of, of content going on your social media channels. And you don't have to worry about doing that anymore. If you schedule a few posts for a single article, it goes into a rotation. So all in all, great tool. Those are a couple that I use that make my life easier. Um, and I hope that it makes your lives easier too. Well, if you have any questions, I'm going to jump off here. But if you do have questions along the way, feel free to post a comment below and I get an answer to you. If you don't have any for now, I do this every month. The last Wednesday of the month, I answer your blogging questions. So I will see you guys in October. Bye.